We've all seen Chef Ramsay lose his cool more times than we can count, but here's a look at some of the times when everyone else but Chef Ramsay lost it. Okay, maybe just a little bit of Chef Ramsay losing it though. Hey, madam! Oh, let me in the kitchen! What are you doing? Just let me in the kitchen! Now, facing off with Chef Ramsay can surprisingly have its perks. I mean, take Neil, for instance. She unleashed her frustration on the boss man himself during one of the challenges, and the entire kitchen practically went silent. Fed up with his constant complaints about her portion sizes, Tenille decided to give him a taste of his own medicine before he inevitably sent her packing. So here's what happened. In Season 6, during the 6th dinner service, Tenille was holding it down on garnish duty. And you won't believe the move she pulled to drive Chef Ramsay up the wall. Come here, why is all this spinach cooked like this? You've got 12 portions in there. She cooked up more spinach than necessary, and Chef Ramsay didn't mince words in expressing his displeasure about it. But it was what he said next that brought the worst out of her. Cook the spinach to order, you lazy cow! Oh man, that definitely struck a nerve. And she couldn't help but fire back with a barb of her own. Chef Ramsay needs to learn how to show some respect, especially when I'm up there working hard. I mean, I could totally understand why Tennille wasn't willing to tolerate that nonsense. She believed that Chef Ramsay needed a lesson in respect, especially given her hard work. However, she also owned up to her mistakes in taking shortcuts and causing Chef Ramsay some headaches. But did Ramsay ease up? Nope, he kept the insults coming. Fuck you. He's a disrespectful British motherfucker. Nobody, and I mean nobody, expected Tennille to blow up like that. And before you know it, the situation took a turn for the worse. Though Chef Ramsay had a good reason to be mad at her. I mean, have you checked out the state of her mashed potatoes? Just that, that's the way I get treated. What the f is that? Yeah. They were stubbornly stuck to the pot, and as if that wasn't enough, it wasn't even enough to feed two people. But what added a humorous twist to this chaotic scene was Tanil's perspective on the whole mess. Yeah, take something up to the past, it's too much. Take something else, it's not enough. You just gotta find something to bitch about. Chef Ramsay accused her of not taking things seriously and threw some harsh words her way. Crap, pathetic, disgusting, Chef Ramsay couldn't stop himself from slamming the dish. And that right there was the tipping point for Tennille. You upset now? Yeah, I'm fucking upset. you are, because you're crap. You're crap. Now, what was Chef Ramsay's reaction? Well, you gotta see this. Hey, madam, madam, get out. Yes, no problem, yeah. Chef. Get fucking out. Oh, I'm out. Yep, this man booted her out of the kitchen while she continued hurling insults at him. You. I'm pissed off, and I'm trying to maintain my cool from slapping him in his jaw. The dude simply didn't care. But did it end there? No way, Tanil was on a roll. You're lying. I'm busting my ass. Get off no, my back. back. Get off your Get back. Get off my back. You're busting my ass. Chef Ramsay finally had enough and told her to shut up and behave. And believe it or not, while I was expecting an on-the-spot elimination here, Chef Ramsay decided to give her another chance. I'm on my way back into the kitchen, Good. Chef! Let's go! Get off my station, please! Well, it was Tanil's fire and passion that brought her back to the kitchen. And that comeback propelled her into the final four, and Chef Ramsay couldn't help but feel proud. If you ask me, I think that's the most insane turnaround this show has ever seen. Speaking of contestants reaching their breaking point, let's skip over to another intense moment. I'm don't gonna do the f man. I just don't wanna shake your hand right now. Am I okay? Is that okay? Back Okay. Up. Right in the midst of the dome challenge, Summer went all in and managed to grab herself some flat iron steak, lotus root, rice noodles, and anchovies. And no, she didn't hesitate to nudge Ileana a bit to secure those prime ingredients and transform those anchovies into a killer broth. Summer, the second in line from the red team to have her dish evaluated during the judgment, faced off against Abe. And here's a look at what she served up. Flavorful broth with the noodles, seared steak on top. Are the anchovies going in your broth? Yes, that's amazing. Make, make yeah, the flavor. Good choice. A delectable flat iron steak with lotus roots and rice noodles. But here's the big question. Did she manage to impress the judges? Well, first of all, this lotus chip, we're going to just order bags of these for my next little venture to watch the movies. And what's the heat in there? What do you use? Red chilies. Some people in my kitchen can just eat them whole. I have a tiny little piece and I'm like, whoosh. The judges ranted and raved about the crispy bits and the perfect amount of heat. She absolutely nailed that round. And Summer was finally feeling like she was stepping up her game in the kitchen. But here is where the plot thickens. The red team clinched the challenge 4-2, earning them a rooftop dance party and some swanky hex glide cookware sets. Not sponsored. Anyway, the sheer joy that swept across Summer's face was so hard to miss. I really needed this. I'm so happy. However, this is when an unexpected twist unfolded. I'm gonna pick Summer. Summer. 
Yeah. Uh, Summer, welcome to the Blue B team. Alejandro, of all people, decided to play his punishment pass card on her. This meant that she had to switch over to the blue team for their punishment, preparing beats for a beetroot risotto that night. Oh no, she wasn't having that, especially after scoring a point for her team. This left her furious, and what she ensued was downright insane. It's okay, baby. Don't, I'm not in the mood right now. Don't, don't take it out on us. I'm not, but I'm not in the mood right now. Abe's attempt to cool things down got swiftly brushed aside, and he wasted no time delivering some words to Summer. If you're pissed don't off, be hey, up that's your me. fault. Oh, you make yourself unlikable, and that's what it is. My team has are. a problem with me? All right. Okay. Back at the dorms, she aimed to settle things with Abe, but he could still sense that she was simmering. She told him not to treat her like a child, but he believed that her attitude was the reason why the other women didn't like her. The whole situation irked the rest of the guys, and Abe didn't exactly extend a warm welcome when Summer had to join their side. It's a bit ridiculous how they chose to channel their frustration onto other contestants over something as trivial as that. Now, let's journey into the realm of another contender who, through a remarkable sequence of missteps, dragged down her entire team into the depths of disaster. In the midst of the charity night dinner service, Sandra found herself in a culinary conundrum. Entrusted with the rack of lamb course, she and Jason ventured into a captivating disagreement over her lamb breading technique. No, no, no. But chill, they're too hot still. No, you cook them 90% and then you then put you the breading on. Yeah. Because who needs to crush the lamb right away, huh? Sandra's steadfast commitment to defying the fundamental rule of it being cooked 90% before breading left the entire kitchen confused. But this person right here couldn't help but speak up. Sandra doesn't know how to cook a f***ing rack of lamb. It's ridiculous. And just when you thought the kitchen was cooling off, Jason finally reached his limit with Sandra's lamb philosophy. And as a result, he decided to share a piece of his mind. Cut between the bones, please. You can't do that. They have to be equal size. Ugh, Sandra. I tried to help her out and she's like, no, no. Well, I'm sure that pushed Sandra into reconsidering her lamb handling prowess. And just when you thought the chaos couldn't get any wilder, Chef Ramsay dropped the bomb that the lamb was cold. Lamb's not that hot. This just does not know how to cook meat and it pisses me off. Is that lamb cold as well? Then Sandra, in a move against Chef Ramsay's own advice, boldly ordered the blue team to flash cook the lamb. Spoiler alert, it didn't end well. Yeah, that's overcooked. Is there more lamb? Talk to Sandra. Sandra. There is no more lamb. Tragedy struck when they not only overcooked the lamb, but also ran out of portions and the blue team literally hit rock bottom. Sandra, trying to salvage the situation, suggested something that completely ticked off Ramsey. Please cut the tops off a little bit, heat it up. Leave me alone. While Jason bluntly blamed her for the mayhem, the blue team, in a generous move, served a solitary slice of lamb to their 12 top table. And Sandra, who was left drowning in shame, couldn't even face Chef Ramsey. In the end, both the teams earned the prestigious title of joint losers, leading to the inevitable nomination of two sacrificial lambs. So, Sandra and who else? I know I'm gonna get f***ing nominated. Eventually, Sandra voluntarily put herself on the chopping block and openly admitted to her mistakes, but highlighted her strengths and determination to bounce back. Unfortunately, she never got the chance to. In her exit interview, Sandra gracefully accepted that it just wasn't her night. She left the kitchen with her head held high and surprisingly, no regrets. But this next contestant really took the chaos up a notch, driving both their fellow chefs and those of us watching from home crazy. I mean, she clearly pushed Robert to his absolute limits. So in episode 7, the blue team lost the leftovers challenge. They got stuck with prepping both kitchens for the night service, along with polishing the top-up plates. And this is where things got really interesting. During the punishment, Lacey seemed to be on another planet, struggling to figure out where to put the plates despite Robert's crystal clear instructions to take them outside for polishing. Like, seriously girl, are you playing dumb or just putting on a show? Tempers hit the roof when Robert pointed out her mistake with the oven tray. You're not supposed to do that, Lacey. Then I f up, then it's not your f you problem. You need to stop right now and listen to what we're trying to tell you. Poor Robert was beyond frustrated with Lacey. I am so sick of Lacey. I'm about to use a Jedi mind trick and just choke the shit out of that bitch mentally. See, Lacey had this talent for getting under everyone's skin. Despite thinking she was a perfectionist, she couldn't resist clashing with others, creating constant tension in the kitchen. In fact, Jay and Danny tried to pitch in and be peacemakers, reminding Lacey that Robert was just trying to help. That bitch has got to go, man. But Lacey, who could just never keep her mouth shut, decided to shout back at him. I'm not fighting. If I fight with anybody right now, I'm leaving. I swear. You're That's leaving? The last thing oh we my need. God. 
things escalated to the point where Robert suggested that Lacey would be better off in a psychiatric ward than Hell's Kitchen. But I mean, what's the difference, right? Anyway, in all seriousness, the blue team lost the service and, as expected, Robert nominated Lacey. But wait, there's more. I'm constantly stressed dealing with your fucking emotional bullshit. How do you think Lacey reacted to that? You've just sat here and fucking blabbed your shit to me. Yup, she decided to bite back. The argument seemed never ending because once again, Robert unleashed his fury. That you gave a fuck since you've been here. The you fucking game. left your team up there while they're busting their ass. He made it clear that he wanted Lacey gone due to her earlier threat to quit. When Chef Ramsay asked Robert how it felt to get his rant off his chest, he admitted that it felt great. The relief on his face must have been something else to see, huh? But somehow, both of them managed to survive elimination, but that didn't mean their mutual hatred was left behind. While Lacey seemed indifferent, Robert had a few choice words about her. Lacey's like a cockroach, she's like the Teflon Don, nothing can touch that bitch. Like, how was Robert supposed to keep his cool? It's obvious how anyone who comes across Lacey was inevitably going to lose theirs. But there have also been times when jealousy led to chefs losing it. So I'm talking about Season 1, Episode 8, when Ralph's usual calm demeanor was put to the test. In the Leftovers Challenge, Ralph went all out, squeezing every bit of flavor out of what he was working with. And Elsie couldn't help but notice his efforts. He's got all these pans going, and I'm just throwing in my stuff, you know, into my pot, making my chicken soup. When Ralph presented his sautéed chicken drumsticks with thyme sauce to Chef Ramsay, it looked like a dish straight out of a restaurant. But just then, a certain little detail stopped his hopes in their tracks. Flavor, uh, not bad. Unfortunately, the raw onion, very, very crunchy. Not a clever utilization of the ingredients. Well, losing out to Elsie hit Ralph super hard, especially since she wasn't a professional chef, and Chef Ramsay practically drooled over her winning chicken soup. That person is... Elsie. Frustration got the better of him. Jealousy can be a bitter pill to swallow, especially in the high stakes world of Hell's Kitchen. But things were about to get worse. Elsie's casual remark about the challenge being better than prep work struck a nerve with Ralph. I haven't won a challenge since I've been here. I feel like I got robbed. Bad for Ralph, good for Elsie. She's gonna go play with somebody with the knives tomorrow. It seems like Ralph was already on the edge since he hadn't managed to clinch a victory yet. The plot thickened even further, with Ralph's punishment prepping the kitchen for the night's service. To make matters worse, Ralph had to watch Elsie's appearance on Good Day Live. Like, talk about adding insult to injury, huh? Good Day Live! Ah! Killing me now! I could only imagine the thoughts running through his mind about how she scored such a cool reward. And when Elsie returned, you have to see how Ralph greeted her. Hi, hey, guys. Elsie! Did you see her? Yes, yeah. as a matter of fact, we did tune in. His smile was practically plastic. If you ask me, maybe Ralph should have channeled that energy into improving his own dish instead of getting worked up over what everyone else was working on. But hey, we wouldn't have much of a show if that was how everyone approached their problems, huh? But that reminds me about this time from season 19 when two contestants named Mark and Declan were at each other's throats. In episode 3, tensions reached new heights in the dorms when Mark, determined to rally the men after losing two members, passionately declared that they had to win the following day. However, Declan made a remark that you've got to hear. That we gotta win tomorrow. Straight up, man. We have to win. If we can, that, that, that speaks to all of us, man. Think about it. Every day you gotta win. And so, the clash of the century began. To add fuel to the fire, Declan accused Mark of having a Napoleon complex. Josh was just waiting for Mark to explode at any given moment now. Stop the dick swinging, dude. I get it. Man, I feel like I could shake you up and you just pop open like so this. Amidst all the chaos, Mark's earlier decree seemed almost comical, leaving Declan feeling like a monkey riding a bicycle inside his head. But what happened between Mark and Declan after the wedding brunch service challenge in episode 4 was even crazier. So when the blue team had to face a pretty humiliating defeat, the tensions skyrocketed. First, Declan declared that he would take charge of the blue kitchen. However, his authority was quickly challenged when he was reminded of his overcooked egg blunder. I'm taking lead of this kitchen for all services. You can't cook an egg. Oh yeah, I can't. Cooked every f***ing egg. Handle yeah. yourself. Yeah. Hard boiled. And you can probably guess what happened next. You listen to me, dude. This, we're not no, arguing. we're not arguing. We're, not arguing. we're, 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 we're in the dining room. A full-blown argument erupted with Peter and Cody trying to play peacemakers, reminding them about the couples watching in the dining room. The blue team's punishment involved making a whopping 1,600 cupcakes for the wedding couples. But back in the dorms, Mark wasn't willing to take the backseat anymore. He asserted his leadership skills and confronted Declan on the patio, refusing to respect his authority. 
I'm gonna stand behind you, or, or take command from you, ain't gonna happen. I'm here to win. The argument reached its boiling point when Declan accused Mark of disrespect, and Mark simply brushed it off. You're up in my face. I'm sitting and sitting down. Okay. You're like that. So that's twice you've disrespected me. Come at me again, and you're gonna see the knuckle sandwich. Now, come on, guys. Slow down. Why don't you save that energy to better your skills instead? But here comes a contestant who blew a fuse over. Well, I'm not entirely sure. I'm sorry, Chef. Can you repeat that? Can I'm I repeat sorry, that? I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, Chef. Yeah, let me repeat it. <laughs> yourself. Moving on to the entrees, Chino's miso cod came out looking like it had been on the grill for a minute or 22 long. Imagine my shock when Chef Ramsay got up in his face about it. I burned the miso cod. You know, I should know too, because I'm Asian. Anyway, this led to his timeout at the chef's table, where sous chef Scott kindly assigned him some garlic prep duty. Definitely something more his speed. There you go, at least you won't be able to burn any of that. Ugh, horrible. But hey, nothing improved in the second service as well. He and Jonathan paired up at the appetizer station, but things went down the drain real fast there too. The first table landed, and while Brendan's orders were making their way to the pass, Chino's risotto was lagging eons behind schedule. And Chino and the rest of his team may as well have been on different planets, considering how poorly they were communicating. How long out on the risotto? Anyway, Chef Ramsay tore into Chino for being too fixated on the rice. When Chino finally sent out his first risotto, well, he made sure to burn it in effigy before the customers could even get their hands on it. And the entire pan went into the trash. So what about round two? Same burnt story. Chef Ramsay's disappointment was written all over his face. I've got another burnt risotto. It's fucking burnt! The incomplete table had to go out or, well, everybody would have gone hungry. Apologize, uh, risotto's behind it, yes? Come on, Chino. Despite the crash and burn, he somehow survived. Again. Some time later, he stepped into the role of assistant maître d'heure for the family night dinner service. But his debut wasn't exactly turning any heads. Gino! 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 When he handed Chef Ramsay the first ticket, well, let's just say Ramsay couldn't make a head or tail of Chino's handwriting. On top of the chicken scratch, Chino forgot a crucial detail, the sides. He was lucky the blue team won in spite of his efforts. And no sides? No, I didn't, Chef. Oh, piss off, Chino. After the blue team's loss in the chicken creation challenge, they decided to roll up their sleeves and simulate a dinner service for some extra practice. His team was left disheartened as Chino stumbled through the practice without any actual cooking involved. It was clear that he was a liability, even when the stakes were as low as possible. How long? You gotta give me four minutes, dude. Yeesh. Three minutes on a three minutes on a Three minutes. Time. During the dinner service, Chino was holding down the meat station with Paul. Things were rolling smoothly until a few speed bumps showed up. Jonathan then stepped in, lending a hand with those Wellingtons. Team effort, you know? But what did Chino know about it? Then came the chef's table's order. Chino confidently called out one minute. Seeing him struggle, Natalie jumped in to help, and sous chef Scott wanted an update. And then Chino's timing was suddenly a whole lot different. How long until it's ready? It's gonna be three more minutes, chef. So you need three minutes? Now, instead of just accepting any assistance whatsoever, Chino's response was entitled as hell. He brushed off Natalie's advice completely, claiming her approach wasn't helpful. You don't need to preach to me, okay? So it doesn't help. It doesn't help, okay? And then the Wellingtons. Chino's moment to shine turned into a kitchen nightmare. Oh, wait, 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 wrong show. But I mean, if you left him to his own devices, I'm sure he could have made any of Chef Ramsay's restaurants need a rescue from his own show. Anyway, when they finally made their way out, Chef Ramsay's reaction said it all raw. Hey, at least he didn't burn it this time, right? Chef Ramsay then ordered a kitchen-wide inspection. And, well, it was back to square one for Chino. It's raw. Raw! But then came his second attempt. And how did that turn out? That is raw. That is white. What is that? So now you just f Yep, still raw. And that was the final straw. The blue team got the boot from the kitchen, all thanks to those undercooked Wellingtons and lamb. All of you, f*** off out of here, get upstairs! Chino's refusal to accept help coupled with his failure to deliver a properly cooked dish was his team's undoing. He knew he messed up, but instead of owning up to it, he seemed to think that Natalie made him look bad. When she tried to be the bigger person and apologize for how she spoke to him, his response was just harsh. Natalie, don't make me look worse. I was trying to help you, and if it came off that way, I'm sorry. And then, to top it all off, when Natalie started getting really emotional, instead of showing a bit of empathy or remorse, Chino doubled down. 
he had the nerve to think that she was just crying for attention. She likes to put on a show and it's a joke. I, I what, what I do, kiss your ass all the time? I wasn't lying. I mean, what the heck, man? His treatment of Natalie was a real low point. It felt like the whole blue team was on board with welcoming Natalie, except for him. I wonder why. Now, luck played a big part for Chino in the earlier episodes. Steven's mishaps, Brendan's blatantly obvious lie, and bam, the blue team snagged a win in episode 3. But when it came to episode 4, oh boy, Chino had nowhere to hide. Let's be real here, in that episode, Chino's cooking game was just not up to par. And there's a genuinely valid argument that he was one of the most incompetent chefs to ever grace the show. And his behavior towards Natalie on his elimination night was totally uncalled for. Making someone cry just because they were trying to lend you a hand is downright disgusting. Anyway, it's gotta be embarrassing to be humiliated on the show when you know your family would inevitably witness it on TV. I'd keep my attitude in check for this very reason. And if you're with me, then drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. But as it turns out, Andrew over here couldn't care less. He decided to take the whole flirting game to a whole new level. I get married in a couple months. Probably not going to be a strong relationship. Ugh. The dude not only flirted with another contestant, but also casually dropped that the Playboy Mansion was the highlight of his life, all while having a fiance. Are you circling my balls right now? No. That's really balding. I mean, it depends how you comb it. Like really? Cheating is never a good look, and Andrew not only betrayed his fiance, but also acted like it was just another day for him. Andrew, here's your grandma Helen and your girlfriend Leela. So not only was Andrew in a way too one-sided open relationship, but he also had a knack for being excessively loud. What's more, he always had an excuse for everything, including his lack of leadership skills. During some reward or other, when Devin suggested toning down his decibel level, Andrew had a full-blown disagreement. All we gotta do is humble ourselves and let's be more soft-spoken and communicate with respect. Hey, by the way, he's right. But according to him, being loud was just a Philadelphia thing. I'm from Philly. I'm loud. I'm boisterous. That's how I am. Oh, of course. That explains it. Philadelphians, comment down below and let me know if this piece of work represents you. But let's be real here. If your leadership style relies on heavily yelling, you're not exactly leadership material. Like at least Chef Ramsay has two volume settings and can string together an intelligible sentence. Good leaders should be in the business of lifting people up, not blowing their eardrums out. Now, time for the Indian cuisine dinner service from season 13, where one contestant messed up big time. It was an interesting mix on the menu, with classics and some traditional Indian dishes like tandoori chicken and off-the-wall stuff like Panera flatbread pizza. Celebs like Billy Gibson, Uzo Aduba, and Lisa Garo showed up as well. Chef Ramsay threw down the gauntlet with Santos and Bryant, asking them to whip up a flatbread pizza. Bryant decided to take the reins. Now, Aaron was trying to keep things smooth, but Bryant, in an attempt to help on the fish station, ended up sending up a raw scallop. But guess whose fault that was? Still stone cold in the Who cooked them? No answer. Who cooked them? My station, I take responsibility. Uh. Later, Bryant tried to weasel his way out. But you certainly didn't go, I cooked them. Because I was like, Bleh, and you're like, I oh, jump on it. Motherfucker, how could I? Wait, what? Then, Bryant got into a spat with Shade, who called him out over his patronizing attitude. Don't give me shit, Ryan. I don't need to hear you. Right, but you're guys, not fucking talking. Despite the internal bickering, the blue team managed to get their appetizers out. The kitchen chaos continued, though, with fish orders piling up, Aaron causing a small fire, and Brian stepping in to handle it. Chef Ramsay wondered if what he was seeing was even real. Shade and Bryant were still at odds, and Santos called out the situation for what it was, a huge mess. Aaron can't even figure out where the fuck he's at. It's a fucking absolute shit show right now. Sade and Brian are ready to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe and slug it out. Then, Aaron sent out a raw salmon, and Chef Ramsay uncovered Bryant's raw garnishes. Touch that. Touch that. Rock. Okay, let's admit it, the men were lost without Sterling. I guess you don't want to jump over the blue team, Sterling. No thank you, Chef. Now, Bryant's anger took the center stage during the deliberations. Oh yeah, Mr. Nice Guy was a thing of the past, and he declared that he was done playing nice. I'm done playing nice. I'm, I'm seriously done. I am fucking done. Uh-huh, bro, we get you. However, things quickly escalated when Brian confronted Aaron about not heeding his advice. Accusations were thrown around and it turned into a heated exchange. 
I don't know why you tonight, you listen to her more than you listen to Garnet. Because she was more organized than you were. Seriously, why was he acting like that? You need a bullhorn at the end of the table here to talk over me, to talk to you. Dude, calm down, no, you ass. You. Then he considered nominating Fernando, who in return criticized Bryant's inability to make a coherent argument and called out his awful attitude. Your attitude sucks. You will never be able to fucking manage a braguet with that fucking attitude. Absolutely right, my man. As Brian's temper flared, Shade urged him to cool it, and Aaron reminded him of the raw scallop incident. You sent up raw scallops for me tonight. You fucking putting justifying on me, showing that you are a weak ass man. Despite Brian claiming that he would take responsibility, there was a lingering concern about a potential physical altercation. Brian was unfazed and taunted the team to nominate him, asserting that he'd survive anyway. Y'all can each vote for me, that's fine, but I'm not leaving. By the way, he's the only finalist I just can't bring myself to support. The guy came off as arrogant, annoying, and overly self-assured. While I wouldn't call it anger issues, he seemed like he was just trying to project toughness. Cause I'm dominant more than you. That's why I'm standing. Everyone knows how the fuck I roll, man. We've set the fucking tone now. That perpetual scowl on his face with those angry eyebrows gave off a vibe of all show and no substance. Don't call me honey. I'm not your honey or sweetie or any of these other fucking pet names. Tell me, tell me about me. Tell me about me then. Now, what do you think? Speaking of, another chef who had unparalleled delusions of grandeur is Amber from season 19. She made a return for the final dinner service among the seven chefs. When Corey chose Jordan over her, she seemed really surprised. I really thought she was talking about me and going to pick me. My feelings are a little hurt. It's just business, so it is what it is. Sorry, but the finale isn't about your feelings. Mary Lou selected her as the third addition to her team after Cody and Nikki and Lauren followed. That night, she confronted Corey for not choosing her like a hurt little child. Despite Corey explaining that it wasn't personal, Amber continued to harbor resentment. She vented to both Mary Lou and Lauren, dismissing Corey's decision as her loss. I'm surprised you picked Jordan before you picked me. Okay, well, it hurt my feelings. Even though she claimed to be over it, Amber still gave Corey a hard time the next day, much to Corey's annoyance. You know, it makes me feel like you think I can't go. And that's not it. That's not it at all. This is going crazy. Like, girls, snap out of it. During the dinner service, Amber took charge of the meat station. At one point, she expressed concern about Lauren, who seemed a bit spaced out. When it came to the entrees, she was pleased to finish in the red kitchen, confident in Mary Lou's victory. However, she couldn't resist reminding Corey that not picking her was her loss. It is definitely your loss. You do not have me on your team tonight. But was it? Well, you be the judge. In the meantime, Chef Ramsay noticed that Amber forgot to include the chicken in her entrees. So we forgot the chicken? Yes, yeah, Chef. Now we've f***ed up. This is all shit. We're not sending that. Mary Lou had to call her team down, and when asked about the chicken delay, Amber estimated seven minutes. This led Mary Lou to refire the entire table, struggling to maintain composure with Amber. During her second attempt, Amber, determined to get it right, readied her refired chicken for the pass. However, Lauren was concerned about the chicken's texture. Undeterred, Amber was ready to serve it and face the consequences. Unfortunately, Lauren's worries were really justified as the chicken turned out to be as raw as could be. This was a fact that Mary Lou did not hesitate to show the rest of the team. All of you come back here right now. Everybody come back right now. Okay, my chicken's raw. I need you all to be on the exact same page. In response, Mary Lou made the call to switch stations for Amber and Cody. But Amber came away from it frustrated, especially since Cody managed to get his chicken accepted. It's so annoying because it's like, boy toy to the rescue. How insulting. In the end, Mary Lou lost the finale to Corey. Guess Corey managed just fine without Amber, huh? She didn't want me, then that's her loss. Her loss indeed. I guess Karma decided to swing by after that little declaration, and I have to admit, it was really satisfying to watch it unfold. Anyway, moving on, here comes a contestant who was a hot mess right from the get-go. First off, he sent up only enough shrimp for just one order, thinking he heard one instead of two. How many risotto are going? Just one. Oh, Chef Ramsay screaming about it didn't do much to salvage the situation either, forcing him to send out just one complete risotto. As fiery as he can be, he can't turn shrimp from raw to cook just by yelling at it. If only, right? Anyway, it only gets worse from here, guys. Scott started arguing that he was confused about what Chef Ramsay actually wanted, asking him to slow down. Where are the other shrimp? Well, I'm, I'm confused, Chef. What do you You're need confused! That? 
Then, instead of just sorting out the shrimp fiasco properly, he sends out a whopping six shrimp when only three were needed for the other order. Chef Ramsay and sous chef Christina were understandably annoyed by this colossal overkill. Six shrimp! Oh my god, you only need oh three now, god. you already cooked three! And here's the cherry on top, Chef Ramsay caught Scott cooking more shrimp when he already had a batch out. Why are you cooking the shrimp? Pardon? You'd already done the order! Now, what was Scott's excuse? Table side. Are you real? Uh-huh, so apparently he was doing it for tableside service. I know, I don't get it either. Chef Ramsay quickly reminded him that tableside stuff was Scotley's gig, not his. He didn't waste a moment and took him straight to Scotley to drive the point home, leaving Scott super embarrassed. Tableside means it's sat next to the table. Yes, yeah, Chef. This is so embarrassing. Well, if you ask me, he looks like a nice, decent guy. Probably in the wrong show though. Okay, so I've already talked about this next moment in one of my latest videos, but I can't help but bring it up again. I'm talking about Elizabeth's fiasco during the 20 year reunion planning challenge. I haven't done a lot of like Hawaiian cooking and stuff, but I've done like Asian and they do taste extremely similar. I mean, like in what world, girl? She screwed up the only job that she had. She was to represent her team at the committee meeting where she was instructed to stick to the Hawaiian theme. But Elizabeth had other plans. How do you guys feel about combining meat and seafood on the same plate? And obviously her idea left the committee dumbfounded. Any more questions? No, I think I've, I've sure? had a concept. Yeah, no, she totally didn't. During the cooking process, Elizabeth only confused things even more. Her suggestion of bacon wrapped scallops caused concern among her teammates, especially Jamie. I was confused as to if she really did have the right details or not. And yeah, Elizabeth also failed to mention that one of the committee members was a pescatarian, which Chef Ramsay was nowhere near happy about. Elizabeth, Diada did explain that she was a pescatarian and she couldn't eat meat. Her leadership, or lack thereof, resulted in a harsh 0-3 loss for the red team and all the punishments that came with the territory. I. Okay, I'm sorry, I was under the impression that like we, we could mix them. Amidst the punishment, tensions flared as Elise, rightfully upset, confronted Elizabeth about her misinformation campaign. Elizabeth attempted to defend herself by claiming that she heard something about Asian food from the committee. However, things got even messier when Elise threw the pescatarian guest in her face again. This was an old wound that really showed how unempathetic Elizabeth was. I'm not gonna take all the blame for this when we lost by a landslide. Yet, her response fell short again as she hesitated to fully accept responsibility for the errors. I mean, I was laughing at how bad she screwed up. And well, viewers certainly agree. But in more colorful terms, for real, Elise had every reason to let loose on Elizabeth after that flop. I mean, who wouldn't be pissed off, right? Elizabeth just seemed so stubborn for not owning up to it. Honestly, it was a wonder how she made it this far. By the way, how did you like Bonnie's journey on the show? To be fair, I think she made some stupid mistakes, I ain't gonna lie. In the second dinner service, Bonnie was working on the fish station and stumbled by cooking three orders of scallops instead of one. This caused a huge ripple effect that threw off the entire kitchen's workflow. See, I've caught one spaghetti, one scallops, and she's doing three scallops. Anyway, moving to the fourth dinner service at the meat station, Chef Ramsay discovered Bonnie's error of slicing the chicken in half before returning it to the pan. Is that just sliced in half then, put back in the pan? The chef? Oh no, Bonnie, yes, not chef. that. Her explanation failed to convince Chef Ramsay and he made it clear how dry the chicken was gonna be because of it. It's fucking lost its texture. Right now, you're all screwing your fucking selves. The situation escalated when Bonnie mistakenly lied about refiring it, intensifying Chef Ramsay's frustration. You're saying yes all the fucking time, yet nothing's done! His reaction resulted in an order for the women's team to collectively regroup and work together just to make up for Bonnie dragging them down. However, both the struggles and the criticism persisted as Bonnie served yet another dried chicken. Look, it's ripped to f it's dry. Oh god. Chef Ramsay found a serving station in disarray, which only added to his mounting frustration and disappointment in the ongoing lack of quality control and organization on Bonnie's part. It's not going anywhere, we're not getting anything out, everyone's fucking sunk. Bonnie's missteps across multiple services were glaring. Her errors with the scallops and mishandling of the chicken really showed her lack of attention to detail. Her messing up the entire kitchen was just cake at that point. Now, in the sixth service, Bonnie hit another snap when her pan caught fire, leaving her uncertain and clueless about how to put it out. 
And Chef Ramsay had to intervene swiftly, you know, fighting fire with water. Way out the way. Never walk around with a pan. On fire, you stand back. He took the opportunity to lecture Bonnie on fire safety, emphasizing that stepping back would have been the safer response rather than risking burning down the restaurant like she had. Setting fire to the fucking restaurant, hello? Now she's burning the place down. Still though, it was honestly amusing to watch. But I gotta say, Chef Ramsay's super caring towards his chefs. However, things took a turn for the worse during the prep for the 8th service. Nervous about what was coming, Bonnie made a critical error by mistakenly discarding some perfectly good monkfish, thinking they smelled off. This decision led to a significant fallout as sous chef Marianne rightfully chastised Bonnie for discarding all 23 portions designated for the service. What are you doing? That was all that we have. To add to the whole debacle, sous chef Scott disagreed, stating that the monkfish didn't smell bad at all. It smells like monkfish. Oh my god, I'm freaking out. This misjudgment resulted in a colossal waste of food. And we all know how Chef Ramsay loves wasted food. Imagine if he found out about that. How do you think he'd react? It definitely wouldn't be pretty, I'll tell you that much. Meanwhile, between Melinda's Capellini and Louis' lamb, there was a lot going on during the opening night of season 6. But don't let it distract you from the fact that Amanda really dropped the ball at the dessert station, messing up the whole team's game. Look at that! It's like a bison's penis! Chef Ramsay spotted a messed up piece of salmon just lying around, and Amanda straight up owned up to it, admitting she screwed up big time by mixing up the freezer with the fridge. I fucked it up. The salmon was my fault. Either way, it forced the team to scratch the salmon off the menu for the night. When sous chef Heather unveiled a backlog of five salmon orders waiting, Chef Ramsay sarcastically congratulated Amanda for her great job. Just a super outstanding performance, right? The red team, in the end, were declared losers for not serving any entrees at all. Which I mean, no duh. Amanda found herself in hot water as the red team's second nominee for elimination following Melinda's nomination. When Chef Ramsay asked if she was on board with this decision, Amanda firmly disagreed. Uh, Amanda, do you agree with this? I do not agree at all. However, Chef Ramsay wasn't done. He went straight for the jugular, asking Amanda if she finally figured out the difference between the fridge and the freezer. <laughs> Chef Ramsay never disappoints. Now, let's circle back all the way to season 5. I've talked about Seth's filet gate to death a ton in the past, but how many of you remember his performance at the fish station in the fourth service? There you go, rubber scallops, yeah? What, what, what is that? His initial attempt at scallops resulted in, say it with me now, rubbery and poorly cooked dishes. He drew criticism from both his colleagues and prompted Chef Ramsay to take drastic measures by forcing him to eat what he had sown. But bro was just goofing around. I didn't have any dinner prior to that, so I was pretty happy to be eating them. He's a glass half full kind of guy, I guess. However, Seth's shortcomings really didn't end there. As the night progressed, he failed to maintain focus and attention to detail, failing to repeat a ticket order called by Chef Ramsay for the blue team. What did I just call out? This lack of attentiveness disrupted the kitchen's flow and indicated a significant lapse in his ability to handle crucial information during the service. I don't know, Chef. No, I know you don't know, because you weren't even to listen. The most concerning incident unfolded when Seth was observed doing this. What is he doing? Uh-huh, wiping his face with a cloth and subsequently using the same cloth to wipe down a pan? I just watched you wipe your face and then wipe a pan. Mmm, so yummy. This flagrant disregard for hygiene and cross-contamination protocol prompted Chef Ramsay to reprimand him severely. Where's your cooking cloth? Uh, I'll have on yeah. Chef. How fucking unsanitary. So, could you think of more times when contestants messed up real bad? Don't forget to drop them in the comment section down below. And if you thought this video was crazy, you have to see my next post right here since it's even crazier.